Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting topic in unit 4, basic processing unit. We are going to see how to fetch a word and store a word from the memory. Right, that is, so far we are seeing the fundamental concept of the processor. Okay, we have already seen how the register transfer takes place inside the processor. And we have already seen how ALE operation takes place inside the processor. Now we are going to see how the processor fetch a word and as well as store a word from the memory. Right. So it is very important topic. Right. So we will start with first fetching a word from the memory. Right. From the name itself we can understand fetching a word from memory in the sense. Right. We are going to get some information from the memory. Right. How about fetching a word. Right. I will just give you one very good example for it. Okay. Right. And before seeing this particular example, you have to understand one particular thing. That is, this MAR, MDR, everything inside the processor. Correct? And whatever transfer which happens inside the processor, right, it, it will be within a time period. That is a clock cycle. Right? Within one clock cycle, it will do, do one data transfer. Right? Any data transfer, for example, from MDR to internal bus. For example, you want to transfer data from MDR to this particular register, right, or to the internal bus, right, or from MAR to MDR, any particular transfer, it just needs only one clock cycle. It will just need only one clock cycle. That's because processor is very powerful because it has, it has cache memory, correct? It has cache memory. And also it has registers, temporary registers, which will speed up the operation, correct? Right. So, whenever a read cycle is initiated, any data transfer is initiated, within one clock cycle, it can able to get the information from cache memory or temporary register and it will do that operation within one clock cycle. Okay. But that is not the case for other register. For example, if you have a register here, which is connected to the input-output device. Input-output device. Right. This is processor bus. And that is connected to a register which is content to the internal output bus. Right. And whenever you want to transfer a data to this particular internal output device, right, a read cycle will be initiated. Okay. But this particular input output devices will not have cache memory, will not have temporary register. So the operation will take more time. It will take more two or three clock pulses. Okay. But the processor will need only one clock pulse, correct? So, there will be a difference in speed, right? So, difference in speed, right? So, the processor has to compensate that, correct? So, it has to understand when this particular read operation is completed. When this particular device completes the operation, only then it can process it, right? So, how can it be done, right? For that, there is a control signal which is called as MFC, which is memory function completed, right? That is, whenever the read cycle is initiated, understand very carefully, whenever the read cycle is initiated, right, and if there is connected with any internal output device or any particular output device, that any, any device that has to respond to that read cycle, right, what it will do is, once it, that process is completed, it will initiate this MFC signal, MFC is equal to 1, right, it will initiate that particular control signal. Once it is initiated, the processor will understand, right, that read cycle is completed, that particular device has completed that work. So, then it will process that particular information, right. That is called as memory function completed, okay, right. So, now coming to this particular example, right, let us move the content of R1 to R2. I just give first, I will just explain the process and then I will explain the program, okay. So, you can see here, move R1, R2. What does it mean? That is, we have to move the content of R1, right, to R2, which means R1 is a register which is having some information, correct, which is having some information. This particular information must be transferred to a register which is called as R2, right, that is what the second instruction. Now, the processor, how the processor will perform this operation, right, as I said, any particular instruction, listen very carefully, any particular instruction, it cannot directly execute it, right? You have fetch phase and then execution phase. Fetch phase and execution phase, right? That is, this particular instruction will be in the memory. 
from memory it has to go to the processor the instruction itself must reach the processor once after reaching the processor it will reach the ir right only after reaching the ir this particular instruction can be executed okay so the first phase is fetch phase this instruction must reach the this instruction must reach the processor correct right? okay so now we'll see how this particular instruction is executed okay from r1 the content has to move to r2 okay so for that what you have to do is first we have to move this content to the memory correct from the memory the processor has to get this particular information so you can see here right the r1 information right that is the address of the r1 is sent to the mar correct right so and it will initiate the read cycle right you can see that the address of the r1 is sent to mar and the read operation is initiated okay and the processor will wait right for what it will wait it has to wait until it respond for well, for this memory function complete as i said this read cycle will complete only if that particular if that particular signal mfc signal is received correct so the processor will wait right until it reaches mfc signal from the memory right once it reaches the mfc signal right once it reaches the mfc signal which means the read operation is completed if the read operation is completed what will happen what will happen the data will from what i have said right from mar it will reach what it will do what it will do it will reach to mdr correct correct right so you can see here from mar right after receiving the mfc signal right that is at the end of the read cycle right the mar from the data will from mar will be sent to the mdr right that is the address location of that particular information right the r1 the address location right right that particular content will be loaded in the mdr right now now you understand now the content is in the mdr memory data register correct right once it is an mdr what will happen you can see here if it is an mdr the content reaches the mdr right once it reaches the mdr it can send to the internal bus correct through mdr out is equal to 1 right and if it reaches here what you can do we can do you can send to any particular register you can see here from that you can send to the r2 right i am just explaining how the instruction is fetched right we are seeing fetch a word from the memory that is what we are seeing we are not explaining the complete operation here clear right so what happens here i'll explain again that is we got to move the content of r1 to r2 correct so what happens the content of r1 right reaches the mdr through mar right how it is done first it initiates the mar right and through the read cycle right once at the end of the read cycle the content in the mar will be sent to the mdr right and through mdr it is sent to the r2 correct right now we'll explain it the same function this is the same flow i'll explain the program you can see here right move the content of r1 to r2 right you can see here r1 is out right r1 is out from the rest which is meant, which is nothing but r1 the content of r1 is sent to the internal bus correct right r1 is equal to 1 means it will send to the internal bus and from internal bus it is sent to the mar mar because it has to fetch that information right and so it initiates the mar and the initiate the read cycle right it sends to the mar and it sends and it initiates the read cycle okay and what happens here it will wait right what will happen it will wait right until the read cycle it will wait until the mfc signal is completed right once the mfc signal is completed right the mar information will be transferred to mdr right how it will be transferred it will be transferred to r and e you can see here whatever information the external information it has to come from mdr in e okay so you can see here the information will be coming from mdr in e right when it will come once after receiving this particular mfc signal right and once the data reaches the mdr it has to send to the r2 right you can see here mdr out right through internal bus it will reach the r2 you can see here right through internal bus it reach the r2 this is very simple execution that is for fetching a data from the memory clear
right so you can see here this is the very important diagram where you can understand as i said whatever processor whatever processor operation it performs it is a time limited period right it has in every clock cycle it will complete okay so you can see here whenever a particular address is reaches the mar right this is the clock signal you can see here this is the clock signal right this is the clock signal right and whenever there is an address information in mar it is enabled you can see here it is enabled okay right and once mar is enabled what it, what does it mean it initiates the read cycle you can see the same at the same time it initiates the read cycle okay once the read cycle is initiated right what will happen the processor it will it will initiate the circuit right that the read circuit the control signal the read circuit Right, the read control signal will be initiated through the internal circuit, right? And that is memory read. You can see here, right? That is uh, MAR, right? The, once the MAR is initiated, that is a read operation is initiated. Once the read operation is initiated, the processor it will produce a control signal to the internal circuit, right? That is memory read. You can see here, this is executed at the end of this clock cycle, right? That is as soon as the read cycle is initiated. This MR instruction control signal is initiated, right? Now, once the end of the read cycle, right? That is, at the end of this read cycle, what will happen? What will happen? The content from the MAR will be saved to the MDR in. That is what we are seeing here, right? MDR in. You can see here. Once it is enabled, the MDR is also enabled, right? That is, it is ready to receive the data from MAR, correct? Right. But when the data will be received, it will wait. Till this particular signal receives, right? You can see here it will wait until it receives the read operation completes. You can see here M of C is received only at this clock cycle. At this clock cycle, you can see here only at this clock cycle the M of C is received, right? In between, right? And only in this particular cycle, what will happen? The data you can see here the data is saved in the MDR. Okay, the data is saved in the MDR only at this particular cycle after receiving the MSC signal. Okay, and the next signal, what happened at the next clock cycle? You can see this is the next clock cycle. MDR out is enabled, right? That is the data in the MDR is sent to the R2. You can see this is the last instruction, right? So if you understand this diagram, the clock cycle, you can able to write very clearly, right? All you have to understand is the first thing is it initiates the MAR, right? Whenever it has to fetch the data, it will get the information. It will send the address to the MAR, and it will initiate the read cycle. At the end of the read cycle, it is sent to the MDR, correct? Right. From MDR, right? It will send to the instruction register, and here it is just a transfer of information. We are just seeing fetching of information. So we are seeing how from MDR it is transferred to R2. Clear? Right. This is fetching a instruction from the memory, right? Similarly, you have to understand how storing operation takes place. What is storing operation? For example, the same content, right? That is R1 add R1 R2. Now you understand how the instruction is fetched from the memory and executed, right? Now processor, what it will do? It will perform all this operation, right? It will get the content of R1, get the content of R2. It will add this and it will produce a result, right? It will produce some result, some. This sum has to be saved in the memory, right? Right. So for that, what we have to do is we have to go for a right cycle. We have to go for right cycle, right? We already know what is read cycle. What is read cycle? Read cycle is nothing but content of the MAR is read is sent to the MDR through read cycle. Correct? Correct. Here it is opposite. Here because the processor has the result. The processor now sends the information. What sends the information to MAR? Because this result cannot be just saved like that, right? It has to stay in some address location, right? So it has to send to the MAR, right? How it will send the processor? First, it will send to MDR, right? It will send the MDR and it will initiate the write cycle. And at the end of the write cycle, it will send. The, it will write the information to MAR. The same operation here, but it is inversed. From MAR to MDR read cycle here MDR to MAR read cycle clear now you can see here this particular instruction move R2 to R1 here you can see R1 is mentioned in brackets that is 
we have to place the content of R2 in the location mentioned in R1. Then R1 is an address. R1 is something here. Is an effective address. Is an effective address here, right? So we have to place the content of R2 in R1, right? So what we have to do? First, this is address and this is data, correct? So the address has to send to MAR and data has to send to MDR. And the read cycle must write cycle must be initiated. Correct? You can see here the data of R1 that is sent to MAR. That is the address location, right? The content of R1. It will have the effective address that is sent to the MAR in. Right? And similarly, this is the data. R2 is the data, right? That has to be saved in MDR in. Right? MDR in, that is the result, right? As for our example, right? So this, but this is the result, for example, right? So this result is saved in MDR and it will initiate the write cycle. Okay. And when the write cycle will complete, it will wait until it respond. Right. It will get the response for this read cycle. Sorry, write cycle. Right. Once it gets the response, what it will do is the MDR out is enabled. That is from the information which is in the MDR is sent to the MAR in this particular location. Got it? Right? Why it is MDR out here? Because we have to move the content from MDR to MAR. Right? We have to write the content. Right? Clear with this? The same operation, the read operation, that is just an opposite of it. So today what we have seen is, we have seen how to fetch a instruction, right? Or a word from the processor and how to store a word in the memory. Right? That is how the processor will fetch a word from the memory and how the processor will store the result, the word in the memory. That is what we have seen. Hope you understand the logic. Right. Thank you, students. Thank you, students. Thank you for watching. Kandipa in the video, Ongal Kalar, Kurumbu useful Subscribe, passionate professor, and keep learning. Thank you very much.